Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today, let's talk about some fun tips when it comes to using the multi tap delay in Cubase 13. The multi tap delay is a very sophisticated delay. It allows you to do the echoes like a regular delay does, but then it takes everything a step further because you can put in these various taps and get all kinds of strange delay effects that go way beyond just a quarter note, eighth note, or typical delay patterns that you have. And then it takes it a step further than that by allowing you to actually change the sound of each one of these taps. You can have different effects or change the panning, all kinds of things that can allow you to make a very complex delayed effect. But when you first open up this effect and want to do those kind of things, you may look at this interface and basically have no clue where to begin or what to adjust to get anything happening to move you along in your musical project. So let's resolve that issue so you can have some fun with this thing even if you don't know every single nuance of every single knob and button. Before we start, let's get rid of it, figure out how to open it up. If we go to an insert of a channel, we can just type in the word delay, and we're given our list of different delays on Cubase. One of those options says multi-tap delay. If I click on that, then I can click the little E button to open it up, and now I'm looking at the multi-tap delay. Now, the first thing you want to understand that will make this thing somewhat accessible to you is that you can use it just like a regular delay. In other words, when I first open up this effect, if I hit my VST instrument that it's connected to, then I get a typical delay kind of sound. And that's controlled by this knob over here on the left. Right now it's set to a half note, and I can just spin this to whatever I want, just like I would in any typical delay. That's what you want to be able to do before you get overwhelmed with all the options that this thing gives you, is just use it like a regular delay. In other words, I'm going to dial it to an eighth note, play something on an eighth note, or move it to a quarter note, play something on a quarter note, or spin it up to some of the dotted options. For example, I want an eighth note dotted. It has a little blue sync button, so if you don't want it to follow the tempo, you can turn that off, change the actual frequencies, or leave it on, and then it's gonna match the project tempo. But now the first thing that moves this on to being a unique delay is the option to put in these tap points. And all you have to do to make a tap point, go to the upper part of this graph and double click. Then you have this point, you can move it up and down the scale, if you listen now, you can hear what this one tap point has done to the delay. Every time I hit my chord now, I get a double hit before the delay rings out. And the more tap points I put in here by double clicking on them, the more sophisticated this delay becomes. And I keep adding these tap points. And again, I can simply move them back and forth wherever I want, getting all kinds of different effects. This basic grid area is one bar in length. If you look at the bottom, you have a display that breaks that up into whatever increments you want to use. For example, right now it's set to a 16th note. What that means is now there's 16 lines going down my grid that I can kind of snap these tap points to. And if I change this, for example, to an eighth note, then I have eight lines on this grid and my tap points can snap to and give me a whole different result. You don't have to put these tap points on the grid. You can simply move them and drag them a little bit. And immediately, you'll get some really unique results. Things that have no relation to a tempo anymore. And just like you double click to put them in, if you go to the little numbers at the top and double click again, you can then remove these tap points and bring your delay right back to a simple delay. So once you get comfortable adding some taps in here by double clicking, the next thing you're going to want to have fun with is actually changing the volume of each individual tap point. Click right below the little circle at the top. You can drag the volume up or down. If you have a mouse wheel, you can adjust it that way as well. And immediately the basic sound, when you make a few volume changes, becomes completely different and then experimenting and changing them around. Moving these tap points to different areas. Coming back over to the resolution, changing the different resolutions, moving your tap points and changing the volume. You're gonna get completely different results very quickly. And then the next option you wanna mess with, move to the panorama tab. And at first it looks like there's nothing here, but in the panorama tab, you have a line going right down the middle that says 0%. If you click on that line and drag either up or down on one of your tap points, this allows you to change the stereo field. So again, if I leave it just like it is at the center, 
then move these tap points, say hard left and hard right, and then play that. If you have headphones on, you're hearing those tap points all over the place. And it's fun to change them right as the taps are playing. So you can immediately hear the different results. And then if you're lost for ideas, you actually have a randomize button. Every time you click this, you get a totally different result. It allows you to quickly hear all kinds of different options without giving any thought to it at all. If you create all kinds of taps and you want to just wipe it clean, you have a reset button on the right, hit that, and all your taps are automatically removed. And then the last thing I want to show you today is just put in a few of these tap points. You also have this option to put effects on each one of these points. If we move down to the bottom of the effect, each one of these sections open up if you click on them. There's one down here that says tap effects, and then there's an option that says add a module. If we click on that, we get this huge selection of different effects, a chorus, filter effects, even another delay. Let's start by taking this reverb effect, and when you click on an effect, it automatically applies it to every one of your tap points. But the fun stuff, Clicking towards the bottom removes that effect, and clicking towards the top turns it back on. Besides turning them on and off, you can then come down into the effect parameters, specifically change things there. For example, if I want to bring the mix level down, or I click on this tap, I want to move the mix level all the way up, change the size of that reverb. Let's add another effect. I click on Add Module. I'm going to hit the Filter option. Again, it puts the filter on all three of these taps. Tap 3, I turn it off, and just leave the filter on the middle one. And then I get this. Anytime you click any one of the effects, it shows it up in this window, and then allowing you to make quick changes any way you want. And then here's a bonus point. If you go up into the upper area, it says Character, and there's actually a drop-down arrow here. You can click this on the right. It opens up a whole other section, and you have all kinds of various knobs and options. One easy one you can work with right away is there's a knob here that says saturation. And what this allows you to do is apply saturation just to the echo points or the multi-taps. Your initial sound won't change at all, but the echoes themselves will become kind of fragmented or a little bit more distorted. And the effect compounds itself with every hit. So if I play this echo here, which right now has none of the saturation on it, if I turn the saturation up all the way, really adds an extra dimension to the tap echoes, become more distorted, more in the distance. And again, the effect kind of compounds every time the tap hits. So if you have a long echo, for example, you can really hear this effect change over time to give you an extra dimension to your delay sounds. So all in all, the multi-tap delay can really give you some extra character to any delay you want to add into your music. And even with just the simple moves we did today, double-clicking to add a tap point, double-clicking to remove it, moving it along the scale anywhere we want, and then changing to the panorama and changing the stereo field on each tap, moving to the tap parameters where we learn we can add effects if we want, and then ultimately we want to add a little bit of saturation on each repeated tap point. The next time you reach for a delay, give the multi-tap delay another look. See if it doesn't give you just that little bit of extra interest in your next song or production. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we learned about some fun tips we can use with a multi-tap delay in Cubase. We saw how we can use this delay as a simple regular delay, but then we learned how to add tap points, change the volume on those tap points, go to the panorama tab, change the stereo field, we learned how we could add effects to our tap points. And then we finished off talking about the saturation knob and the effect that can have on the echo of the tap points. As we continue to move through and become better all the time at our creative options and learning all the different tools that are available to us, pick this up next time. As always, it's great to have you guys here and I'll see you on the next video.